Paul McCartney is many things. Musician, performer, composer, businessman, former Beatle. He's even a knight. But his proudest creation is his family and his remarkably durable marriage to the former Linda Eastman, who's lately been battling breast cancer. Paul and Linda were married in 1969. In 1979, they were guests on NBC's Tomorrow Show. Tom Snyder asked Linda how they met. Uh, I was in London on a photographic assignment, down at a club. I went to see Georgie Fame and the Blue Flames, who's a British group. And Paul was down there. Were you not? And I picked her up. You picked me up just like that? Simple as that, Tom. <laughs> Very <laughs> romantic. I, I love uh, you coming down to speak, you know. <laughs> just, yeah. There we are. Never look back. A lot of guys who would have had your success and your fame and your following might wish that sort of thing to go on forever. Yet one day you said, I've had enough of that. I want to forgive the term settle down and have a family and be with somebody I like and somebody I love. And you didn't miss all that other thing, or you don't seem to miss it. Not really, no. I mean, what can you do, Tom? <laughs> His hands are tied, Tom. No, it's, it's true, actually. You know, I, th I think the thing in my case is I don't so much of it. <laughs> and I've been knocking around the world with the Beatles for a good ten years there, and uh, when the time came to get married, I'd, I'd uh, sown my wild oats or whatever you say, you know, so I'd had enough. <laughs> and I, I was quite ready to just kind of settle down and see what happened, and uh, through the years we had kids and stuff, and it's just an education seeing kids grow up, and it's a cabaret too. No, I, 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 I want to just ask Linda one thing about it. Uh, here in this country, uh, whenever they interview the wives of professional athletes, popular football or baseball players, the question is often asked, look, there are women in stands who uh, think your husbands are terrifically attractive and very strong and very powerful, and they meet them for autographs or whatever, and how do you handle that? Uh, I'm certain that there are uh, fans of Paul's that would very much like to have a cup of coffee with him or something. A and, cup of coffee? And, and do you and he talk about that or joke about it or talk about it and try and keep it in perspective? Um, well, we used to a lot more have a laugh about it or talk about it, but I think now we've been through it for so long that um, we just smile about it. Don't do it no more, Tom. Don't do it no more. Tune in next week, Tom. <laughs> I'll try one more time. How hard do you have to work? at making your family life succeed, considering the high pressure and high publicity parts of your lives. Yeah, we have to work at it um, a little bit because we have to talk to the kids about it, because uh, they want to know. I mean, I remember one of the kids coming up to me once and saying, you're Paul McCartney, you know. And it was a bit funny, really, because having them say it, you know, it was a bit weird. But we just sit them down, kind of talk to them about it, and just ask them what they feel about it. And they're, they're pretty normal, you know. We work at keeping them normal. We, we send them to ordinary school over here instead of sending them to sort of uh, high-paying fee schools and stuff. So we just work at keeping them normal, and that's one of the reasons we try and be with them a lot, because I think one of the things in showbiz, people through no fault of their own always feel they, they have to be away. If their agent says, you're going to Las Vegas, then they might leave the kids in New York, you know. Uh, and we just don't happen to have ever done it like that, even when we're going on holiday and stuff. We've never actually had a holiday away from the kids, because uh, they're not a headache to us. We actually enjoy them, you know. That was 1979. A few years later, NBC's Brian Gumbel checked in on Paul McCartney, family man. Have you surprised yourself a little bit, I mean, in terms of, of, of your devotion to family? Yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, when I was younger, definitely, I could have never imagined it, you know. would have really thought... Uh... I was just, I don't know, just be a bachelor and a musician or something. Uh, it creeps up on you, though, doesn't it? You know, it's your age, though. You suddenly realize you like all that stuff. You can't talk about having babies. You've got to have babies. There's a big difference, you know. Talking about them, imagining it and theorizing is one thing, but actually having them crawling all over you and they're yours, you know, is a, makes a big difference. They're nearly always with me. I've just been in L.A. They were there with me. They're here with me now. Not here with me, but <laughs> here with me. Has it been at all difficult to be, to find a balance between being a good family man and a good music man? Uh, I don't really think it has actually. Um, I think you know you, things have got to work out right. You know you've got to you've got to be lucky, uh, find the right woman and stuff. You know. 
McCartney returned to the family theme a few years later in this 1986 interview with NBC's Rona Elliott. What about being married for 17 years? What about well, that's it? That's pretty incredible. Yeah. For anybody. Guinness Book of Records time. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we're surprised constantly, you know, because, I mean, they did always say that when you kind of get past 40, like the years seem to flick by, and they really do. God, it's terrifying. So, but, but, you know, 17 years, yes, she's a great woman, very strong woman, very misunderstood, because when she does interviews, it tends to tense up, because she's not really a sort of professional person that way. She's, she's not used to being in the public eye, she's used to being behind the camera, which is a lot easier uh, than actually sitting there and explaining, trying to justify living. I'm okay on it.